This year, Holden enters an important time in its post-war history, when, on October 20th, it closes its Australian manufacturing plants for the final time. But this needn't be a point for mourning. Instead, we've come here to Holden's top secret proving ground in Lang Lang, Victoria, for a celebration of one of Australia's most loved and favourite car brands. What you're looking at here are 58 of the greatest models to have ever worn the Lion badge, with everything from a 48215 through Monaros, through a Sandman, to the modern day VF Series 2. Put simply, this is the biggest family portrait we have ever arranged at Wheels. Eric Spokes, this is your 48215. It's great to have the car here, a bit of a centerpiece. You've had it 15 years now, yeah? Yep, yep. It wasn't in this a good condition when I got it. It was just in bits and pieces. You've done a fantastic job on it. Obviously, a labour of love. Yes. Um, no plans to get rid of it ever, I'm, I'm assuming? Uh, no, not at this stage, no. Now, in this glove box, there's something a bit special, isn't there? Yeah, one of the original designers, Jack Rawnsley, yep. went to America and, and designed this car. Well, he's actually signed the glove box, so... Excellent, and that's still in there? It's still in there, yeah, with his signature. He signed it back in 2001. What a fantastic piece of history with a fantastic car. Thanks again so much, Eric. It's fantastic no to, to see Thank the car. You. Thank you. Mark Fraser, thank you so much for bringing along your HK Monaro today. It's an absolute beauty. Yeah. You've had the car 23 years now. 23 years. But I understand when you first acquired it, it was a daily drive. It was. So I needed a car and a friend's dad was selling this and I bought it for $2,000. And you used it as a, it was effectively your tradey ute? It was. I was a builder's labourer, so back seat was carrying shovels and rakes and toolboxes in the boot. But it didn't look quite so nice back then, did it? No, no, it was all original, but a bit of rust started to come out, so had a panel beater friend cut the steel out and make it all look pretty for me. Now there's a really nice story with the car that it was finished just in time for a pretty important day. Yeah, I had it sitting in the shed for six or eight years, just collecting dust, and asked my then girlfriend if she wanted to put a ring on the finger, and she said yes, and got it looking like this, and went to Vic Roads the day before the wedding and got the plates put on it. Fantastic. So, Congratulations. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for bringing it along. No it's great well. to see it on a great day. Oh, it's going to be a great day here. There's lots of nice cars to look at. Daryl Blair, we are perched on the tailgate of your HQ Sandman. It's a fantastic car. Thanks for bringing it along. It started life, though, in your hands as a completely rust-free shell you found at a wreckers yard, right? Yeah, I bought it at a wrecking yard of all places. Um, they'd sold everything off it yeah. and the shell was left. It was rolling. But that was your luck, really, wasn't it? Because the shell is the, the key thing. Well, they're the hardest bits to find in my eyes, but yeah. I bought it back when they weren't that desirable. And you showed me before, I love that you've got the Aussie-made sticker on the yeah, tailgate there. That was one of the most important things for you with this resto and this car, wasn't it? Is you wanted to keep it all Aussie-made. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's all, everything through, it's all holding. And my favourite part of the whole car, tell us about the engine. What's the story behind that? Well, the engine's the last of the Aussie-built 5-litre. Bolted straight in. No modifications. It drives really nice, it's, it's zippy enough, it's not a racing car and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. It's reliable as ever. And do you drive it with the top window open? I suppose because I've had the car for so long it's not that big a novelty to run around the target wide open. Yeah. But um, that's the memory, seeing them all parked at Bells Beach. That's why we're so pleased that it's here, it's part of such an important day for us as well. So yeah, no thanks worries. so much Dale, it's brilliant, brilliant, no, great to talk no to you. No worries at all. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Phil, you are the owner of one of the most pristine and potent cars we've got here today, this Tirana A9X. This is a relatively new addition to your family. Yes, well I've been a car fan for many, many years and I've always wanted one of these. About 14 months ago, a friend of mine who knew the car said the guy would probably sell it. So when I approached him, he balked at the idea, but I just worked on him and I got the car and I was very, very happy with it because a lot of old cars look good, but when you actually get in them, you go, oh. But this thing does everything like it looks. The gearbox, the ratios, everything about the car is bang. Hit the key and say, I love driving this, because you do. You get out, even after an hour and three quarters, and you go, I wish it was another hour and three quarters. 
I'm amazed you've managed to stay away from one of my favorite features of this car for so long, actually. We haven't talked about possibly one of the best things. It does have a little personalization on the interior, doesn't it? Well, it's got a little signature in there. It's probably the most famous signature in Australian motor racing. Don't make our audience guess, who is it? Peter Brock. And it is real? Peter Brock, yes, he's come up and he said, I love it, and he wrote on the glove box, Tirana rules, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm very privileged to own it. And we're privileged to have it here as well today, Tirana rules. You can't say it much better than that, can you, Phil? No, no, thanks, thanks very much. much. Thank, Thank you, much. you very much. I'm uh, joined at the flanks of a very clean Minaro CV8. Uh, Martin, thanks so much for showing us the car. It's an absolute beauty, it's perfect condition. You've owned the car for how long now? Uh, six years. Six years. It looks to me to be absolutely stock, but you have done a couple of little bits and pieces to it, haven't you? Yes, it's got the large uh, HSV brakes. It's been lowered slightly, full exhaust. It's got a rip shifter, a gear shift. Unless you pointed out those things to me, you know, it's, it's difficult to spot you know, the, the modifications. It does still look really standard and, and like honour the original cars. Yes, yes. Well, that's one, one thing I loved about the uh, V2. Monaro, very smooth, clean, yeah. uncluttered design. And unmistakable on the road. When you see one of these, you know exactly what's behind you. Yes, yes, well, especially in the devil yellow, it yeah. uh, makes it easy to find in the car park. Fantastic. Well, motoring privileges do not come much higher than this. I'm at the wheel of a 48215. Obviously when you're driving at uh, Holden's Lang Lang Test Track on the high speed oval, safety is a number one concern. So before I got in the car and drove off, I was absolutely certain that I had my seat. I know people always make the remark when they're driving old cars, sorry I should say, vintage cars is you know there's a smell to them and there's a sound. You can't drive cars, new cars, in the same way. I mean, I'm listening for things and I'm, I'm keeping my nose tuned for different smells just because that's how you learn what's going on in a car like this, not through some head-up display or, or some touch screen. This is, this is real driving. I feel really connected to, to this car in a way that you don't really get so much anymore. All right, time for the HK Monaro what to say about this car. This car, other than the way it looks, is really important in the Holden history because it marked a transition from cars that are effectively humpbacked, not particularly pretty things that were designed to negotiate unsealed roads to what effectively was one of our first true muscle cars. You'll even notice I'm adopting the correct driving position which is very laid back. It's just such a great representation. This for me is one of the most special times in the whole history and honestly one of my favourite Monaros as well. On board one of the cars I've been looking forward to most all day, this is the Sandman. But this is no ordinary Sandman because we know already it's got a little trick, a little secret under its bonnet in the form of a 304 V8 fuel injected and five manual gears. Could you get much more of a 70s icon and an indication of where Holden was in the 70s than a Sandman. The only way this could be any more perfect would be is if I had my top window undone. But just being in a car that's so iconic and so unmistakable on the road is a, is a real privilege and representative of, of a really important time for Holden. So this car, what can you say about it, the V2? Monaro CV8. It's a critical car for so many reasons, not just because of the way it looked. It might not have sold in any massive volumes, but that's pretty much what sports cars do. They peak quickly and then they drop off. But the thing that is so important about this car is the way it was received. When it rolled out as a concept at the 98 Sydney Motor Show, people just completely lost their minds. They'd never seen the Holden like this, and the reception globally was unprecedented. It made front page publications all around the world, and on the back of that, they decided to make the production version, what you see here. This car also marked the start of the modern era for Holden. It's part of its heritage as one of the most recognizable cars on the road today. And uh, although they are still around, there's not many quite as good as this one. When I was looking at its bodywork before, there's not a single ding or dent. It's like it's never been in a car park. 
and so to the A9X. I'd love to have driven so many different Tiranas here today, but if I had to pick just one, of course it would be this one, the one that sums them up all so well. And if you're not listening to this soundtrack and not getting visions of Brocky going up the hill and breaking records at Bathurst, then I'm afraid you're watching the wrong video and you're listening to me talk about the wrong brand. You'd think a day like today would be tinged with sadness and a reminder that we're about to lose something great. But actually it's not. When you get together the kind of fanatics that we've had here today and you put them in a place, in an arena where so many new and exciting Holdens are going to be developed, you realise that Holden isn't just a collection of cars and people, it's an institution. Great models will come and go, but you can't kill the passion for Holden.